to let me know, feel free to just unmute and uh, share. And I think for my announcements, that's it. So as we come back here, you're welcome to begin practice in a seated shape. Maybe you lay back down, right? Just starting class however you want. You might have a prop or a tail, uh, prop the tailbone or prop for the tailbone <laughs> with a pillow, blanket, block. If you're laying down again, you might use a pillow for the back of the head or a blanket if you're cold. And then whenever you're ready, you'll shift around the body for a bit until you'd like to come to stillness. And then we'll allow the eyes to close. And just using this space to welcome ourselves to practice. Taking a moment to settle into the breath. And as we settle into the breath, we'll settle into the body. Having our senses drawn inwards. And noticing anything else here. Maybe you notice the temperature, you notice texture, you notice sound. For our practice this evening, though, we'll discuss this idea of renewal. And maybe we're, we use our yin practice as an opportunity to find this renewal within the body or within the breath, within the heart space, within the mind space. But noticing also whatever will resonate with you, whether it's you know, for today's practice, this renewal of peace or this renewal of joy or this renewal of contentment or renewal of excitement, really the renewal of anything that your body is sharing with you, that your mind is expressing. So feel free to just let this theme kind of develop throughout practice. Let it flourish and blossom so that your body can reveal whatever it, it might whatever the goals are for this evening. So just pausing with that, and sitting within that space, contemplating, creating your intentions, your focus. Maybe it's this idea of letting yourself cultivate this renewal, the renewal of whatever your body will express, whatever the mind or heart will share these aspects that we don't consciously even know, but the body is almost getting ready to reveal them as we come into our stillness and quiet. So as we open up our space for practice, your hands might be relaxed within the lap or you might gather them into prayer, doing whatever is most comfortable for you this evening. Together, we'll find one cleansing breath. Let's inhale through the nose and open the lips to exhale. And taking a moment to come back to that natural breath and just to feel the warmth flourish throughout the body, letting that breath seal our intentions for practice. So when you're ready, we'll slowly open the eyes. We'll bring the hands away if they were together welcoming ourselves back into space here. So we're going to start today with deer, but we're going to um, do this a little bit differently. And so instead of coming into deer on the left and then deer on the right, we're going to take deer on the left side and then come into some other poses and then close out with deer on the right, just so that you know that's where we're going. So with that in mind, staying seated or coming up to sit, we'll allow ourselves to create that deer shape on the left side. Left shin will sweep in front of you here. Right knee will open up behind you. And I'll turn to the side so that you can see as well. Now my ankles, the back ankle will relax differently for different people. It might kind of hang out on a diagonal. It might be tucked underneath you. So really it's just whatever is good for your shin, whatever is good for your knee. Now you might prop the tailbone or you might prop your left glute so that as we fold over that left shin, 
your pelvis is supported. Maybe using blocks or stacking bolsters and pillows and things as high as you'd like so that your forearms and maybe your forehead can be supported. And you're welcome to fold as deeply as you'd like or not at all, your choice. Okay, and taking all of these suggestions with a grain of salt, really. Because even though we might express this deer shape as folding forward over the shin, right, if the spine is going to have that slight twist, you might be leaning a little bit towards the left foot. You might be leaning a little bit towards the left knee and welcome that. By no means is the goal here to fit in some sort of box. So as we enter into our first shape, settling in, adjust props, adjust the body until you're ready to close the eyes and welcome yourself to stillness. Noticing what sensations you feel Stretching within the left hip or glute. Maybe some sensations in the back right hip. Anything along the spine. Even in the shoulders. Noticing these sensations and breathing towards them. And letting the body soften within itself, not just from the support of the stretch or the support of the breath, but softening within the stretch with the support of our awareness. Noticing any clenching or gripping within those spaces, can we allow the body to relax into them? As you continue to soften, and as you continue to release within the muscles and bones, noticing any shifts of breath or shifts of a relaxation, meditation, basically coming into that internal space. Notice what that transition might feel like. We'll stay in our dear shape for a few more breaths. You can always come out of the poses whenever asked to, whenever your body is ready to. But if you'd like to stay for a few more breaths, you're welcome. From here, whenever you're ready, we'll gently begin to press down into the floor. 
we'll begin to lift up through the head and chest. Slowly unraveling the legs, whether that keeps you seated or brings you forward into tabletop or takes you into child's pose. There's many options. And just following the body here. After your counter movements, any movements for the legs, any movements for the arms, any movements for the torso, we'll come to take that pause in rebound. Remembering that our rebound shape could be again in a seated, in a seated shape, laying on the back or belly, laying on your side body. Essentially, I'm here to just give options and whatever sticks, you're welcome to. But settling within our first rebound of practice, can you notice the subtle sensations? The fascia here contracting back. Just giving ourselves a moment here to observe. And if you'd like to stay in rebound a little longer, you're more than welcome to do so. But if you're ready to come into the next stretch, you might begin awakening, right? Maybe some movements, hugging the knees into the chest or moving through the arms. We'll make our way back to a seated shape. And like I mentioned, we're not gonna come into deer on the right side just yet. We're gonna transition into something else. So let's talk about Golden Gate. I'll give us a few options for Golden Gate. That's the yin version of our backbends. So option one, either way, we're gonna allow the legs to straighten out. But option one, you can bring your bolster, your pillows or your blankets and things towards the tailbone. And then as you arch over those props, right? Your shoulders are coming to the mat. They might not touch and that's okay. You still might want a pillow for the head though, just to support the neck a little bit more. And then we'll stretch through this front body and back body with the props in like the torso area, the middle of the back, okay? Instead of doing that, if you'd rather create that same type of arch, but for the shoulder blades, then I usually just switch my props. So I'll use maybe something thinner and I'll still bring my pillow behind me to support my head but then as I let my shoulder blades lay down on that prop, that's where my arch is created. And then I'll let my pillow support my head and maybe my arms hang out in cactus. That's usually the best place for them or just straight up above the head. So depending on how um, thick the prop is, higher the prop, the taller the prop, the thicker the prop, that will be the deeper stretch. But sometimes just one fold of a blanket or two folds of a blanket is actually enough, especially because we're holding these poses, right? So of course, play around, depending on what you need today. Choosing the middle of the torso or the upper shoulders, whatever is calling you. No right or wrong, no better or worse. And depending on where you are, your arms might still feel comfortable laying down by the hips, or they might stay in cactus with the elbows slightly bent, or the arms will just reach up above the head. In the event that straightening your legs feels like there's too much pull on your back, you're more than welcome to bend the knees and bring your feet flat to the floor. Okay. 
feel free to adjust whenever needed. And then we'll begin to settle here, arriving. Noticing stretch or sensation through the back body, through the front body. In one place, in a few places. beginning to soften into your shape if you haven't already. Maybe the ability here to let go of unnecessary tension, to let go of unnecessary control. Maybe that helps cultivate the sense of renewal. Feeling the expansion of breath. Sometimes within the stillness, the mind feels all the spacious, spaciousness and rather than expanding towards it, it might huddle in close and even our thoughts could feel like knots of tissue. And within those times or those certain days when the mind responds in that way, just be patient. Let the mind learn from the stillness of the body. Letting the mind also let go of any unnecessary tension or controls. We'll be here for a few more breaths. And then no rush at all. But whenever you're ready, let's begin to bend into the knees one at a time. We'll bring the feet flat to the floor. You might walk your arms down a little closer. And depending on how you feel, you might just roll to one side of the body and hang out there supported with your props. Instead, you might press down into the floor and come back up to sit. So again, it's your choice, depending on where you wanna take your intuitive movements and depending on where you wanna take that rebound. Sometimes crossing the shins and just gently folding could feel relaxing. Maybe your body will find some movements in seated cat-cow. Just noticing the transition out of the shape because you'll feel subtle sensation there. And whenever you're ready again, just coming into that moment to pause. Taking that breath to stop and smell the roses. Giving yourself that moment to observe and witness.
maybe in the rebound space, we can feel that creation of renewal. If you'd like to stay here a little longer, you're more than welcome to. Or whenever you're ready, we'll awaken from rebound. Sometimes when we awaken from rebound, the body calls for another movement. You're welcome to it. And then we'll come into deer on the right side. So that will now bring us back into the fold. So adjusting your props. Right shin will now relax in front of us, left knee behind us. Allowing yourself to prop the tailbone or even just the right glute if helpful, if helpful. And whether you keep your props surrounded around you for support, maybe vertical for support, or just stacking them as you help, help yourself fold over the shin. Right, or like I said, you'll lean a little bit towards the knee or you'll lean a little bit towards the foot. That's okay too. That back left knee could be as close to you or as far away as you'd like to settle in. Toes can point in any directions. Allowing the ankles to relax. And then from here, <clears throat> we begin to soften into our shape. Again, feeling that release, the breaths of fresh air. And letting the fascia uncoil from within itself as it reclaims its space within the body. Noticing the presence of the breath. And as I'm sitting here and thinking, contemplating, you know, our, our yin practice has its, you know, challenges, especially gravitating towards stillness, feeling comfortable and uncomfortable at the same time. But there's something about the practice that lets us embark on simplicity. The not having to think critically, not having to question, well, is this right? Is it wrong? Because the body will tell us Being able to stay longer in shapes or coming out sooner if your body asks, that's simple. Transitioning into rebounds and taking intuitive movements or just a personalized movement if it's a down dog or a child's pose or something. It's almost 
too simple in ways that make it challenging. Just a few more breaths here in deer. Absorbing anything else that the shape has to offer. And then within your own time, you can either stay a little longer or we'll gently press down and come back up to a seated shape. And again, leaning into the simplicity of this all, letting the body unravel. And if you stay seated, great, come into movements. If you Lay back down and hug the knees into the chest. Great. You'll find your intuitive movement. Maybe that's one little movement there and another little stretch there until you're ready for rebound. If the body would like to be more active and take more movement, that's okay too. But eventually we'll meet in that space to rebound where we take that meditative moment. And it's powerful when we can watch a memory being created. We hold this space as that previous experience settles into the fascial muscle neural memory. This allows us to be present and to stay present. If you'd like to stay here a little longer, you're more than welcome to stay. But if you're interested in coming into the next stretch, then you might take a little movement here or there just to awaken the body, whatever it might be. And then we'll let ourselves come back to a seated shape. If you're not already there, you can take your time. As we come forward essentially into a tabletop shape, we're going to prep ourselves for toe stretch. Okay. So, but then we're going to transition into sleeping swan. So let me just kind of express that. Now, once we tuck our toes, we're going to sit back on the heels, right? Now this might be the best place for you, or you'll walk up and sit on the heels. You might find blankets and blocks and things, whether to support the knees a little more or to support your forearms. So your palms don't have to stay on the mat, but they can. After toe stretch, right, we'll, we'll slowly come out of it, but then you're going to bring your left leg up, your right leg goes long, right, so that we come into sleeping swan or the yin version of pigeon. So at that point, you know, and then you find your props and, and you settle. So I can talk about that more. But in the event that you're not going to want to take the pigeon, you'll just let yourself come back down and you'll take figure four. Left ankle over the right thigh, but you might prop that right foot with a block. The closer the block is, the deeper the stretch. The higher the, the little stack or the little steps are, the deeper the stretch, right? So having two blocks is deeper than having one block. But if this is where you go, you're, you're able to decide. Okay, so that's what's going to happen. Feel free to prep yourself for toe stretch. Once you're in your toe stretch, you'll allow the chin to be neutral. 
or we'll lower the head and let the head be a little heavy. Maybe a complete opposite way is just to lift the chin. A different shape. Whatever you decide to, decide to do, you're always welcome to adjust the body. So never feel that you're stuck. Stillness by any means is not a way to feel trapped within the body. It just allows us to explore different avenues. So just like all of our previous shapes, can we soften? Can we let the breath circulate here from head to toe? As we allow ourselves to really welcome that experience of our edge, sitting here within comfort and discomfort, I'll pause and, and quiet for our final moments. And then whenever you're ready, very slowly, we'll begin to hinge forward, right? So your hands will come down, essentially bringing yourself into tabletop as you untuck the toes. The feet may not want to move, and that's fine, but some people do like to drum the tops of the feet on the ground. Some people do like to shake the feet. And then from there, when you feel ready, that will bring us right into sleeping swan. So you might walk your palms farther, left knee and shin come up towards the left wrist as the right leg goes long. In that event, finding your props for your forehead or torso, propping that left glute with a pillow. If your right hip drops deeply into that left heel, it might be supportive to take a pillow or a blanket and just cushion that right hip. It also helps to even out the hips if that's better for your pelvis or any other place that you feel that you'd like to be propped, okay? In the event that sleeping swan's not doing it today, you'll just swirl around on your body and come to take figure four, right? Whether that right foot stays flat or you bring it some blocks or stacked props underneath it, because by lifting the foot, lifts the tailbone or glides the tailbone a little bit more so that you get stretch. So if you have any questions, let me know. But we'll begin to settle into our shape. I'll start our timer. Adjusting the body. And then allowing yourself to arrive so that we can continue to support ourselves within the stretch. Letting your awareness dance around the body, relaxing, releasing into the layers. These unseen layers, but we can feel their presence. We can feel their pulse. Within our time here, letting go of any clenching or gripping.
our fascia, our inter interconnected tissue, is just as sensitive as the outer layer of our skin. Within these tissues, within our fascia, lives our nerves. And I've said this before, but what I want to add is that as we stretch the tissue and as the fascia uncoils, just by placing the bones at different angles, the nerves are also stimulated. And it's from the stimulation of the nerves that we feel the sensation, that we kind of know where is our edge, that place of comfort, discomfort, what kind of steers us in our directions. So really tuning into the body and following the internal cues is the best way to feel fulfilled from our practice. You might stay here a little longer. Or if you're interested in releasing, you'll do so slowly. Now, depending if you're laying down in figure four, if you're in sleeping swan, we'll all be moving different body parts at different times. So just mindfully awaken. Feel free to find relaxing, or expansive movements for the legs, for the torso, for the arms. No right or wrong. And then of course, from these movements, you'll let the body find that rebound space. No right or wrong shape because the aesthetics of it holds no importance compared to what you feel internally. Any space or any kind of renewal is achieved from listening and tuning in, observing the body, witnessing the body. If you'd like to stay here a little longer, you're more than welcome to do so. But whenever you're ready, you might gently awaken with a few movements here or there, and that will prep us to come back to sit. This will then give us the space to take ankle stretch before transitioning either into sleeping swan or figure four on the right side. So within our space of figure four, many options. Option one, you might come to sit in hero's pose or varasana, right? Cause that could also give you a pretty intense stretch. So whether you sit on one block or two blocks that could always be an option, especially if sitting in varasana actually gives you an intense type of stretch, okay? If not Varasana, you'll bring your heels close together. You'll sit back on the heels. 
right? Some ankles might naturally turn out or turn in. You can even play around with the opposite shape, depending on how you feel and what the bones are interested in doing. That might be interesting enough. If you need to, you can always take a blanket or a pillow in between the heels and glutes. In the event that there is space to lift up the knees, right? So sitting back on the feet, lifting the shins, you might do that, but prop the shins just so that they can stay lifted and it doesn't have to be, you know, you holding the body, your body can rest on a prop. And then same idea, hands are in the lap, hands are on, you know, resting onto the sides of you. Chin is neutral, chin is down, chin might be lifted for a few, a few breaths before lowering it. And then whatever is best for you, you arrive within that space of the stretch. Softening whenever you're ready. Continuing to create that current of conversation, allowing the breath to circulate through the layers. Not feeling separated from the feet or ankles by any way. If anything, continue to feel connected. Just a few more breaths here in our ankle stretch. And then whenever you're ready, we'll slowly begin to release. In releasing, you might move any props that were underneath you to again arrive in tabletop. Knees can walk underneath the hips if you'd like to. If it feels good, you can drum the tops of the feet. You might shake the ankles in the air, roll the ankles, flex and point into the toes until you make that decision of where you're gonna go next, right? So walking your hands forward, you might find sleeping swan, right shin toward or right knee towards the right wrist. The shin can really be in any direction, whether it's literally on top of you and under you, or a little bit more expanded forward to the top of the mat, like how we usually think of as pigeon. But you can place that foot wherever. Propping the right glute if you need, propping the left hip, right? Especially if the hips do, uh, dip or drop, you might prop that left hip. I mean, the event that sleeping swan isn't going to be your shape today, then you'll come to lay back down. Take figure four, right ankle over the left thigh, and you might leave the left foot on the floor or prop the left foot. And whatever you did on the previous side, this side of the body might need something different so you can honor the other option. And that goes for any pose. So then we'll let ourselves settle, finding any props for the upper body, any props that we might need for the lower body. Settling in.
softening into the body if you haven't already. Relaxing in ways that feel supportive to the stretch. Your awareness might stay within the body. Your awareness might drift into the experience of the heart or the experience of the mind at any point in practice. And your awareness might also shift into this, into this perspective. Let me say that again, into the perspective. <laughs> of the mind's eye, where we can notice our steady gaze, or we can feel our eyes daydreaming. Or we can notice what we see at the backs of the eyelids. And some days you might relate to one of these tools, other days you might relate to a different tool or a different experience. So we'll be here for a few more breaths. And of course, if you'd like to stay longer, you're more than welcome to. But when you're ready, we'll begin to release from Sleeping Swan or figure four. Whether you stay in some sort of seated fashion, whether you come to lay down, child's pose might feel good after either of these, or even if you wanna lay on the belly. Taking as many movements as you'd like or transitioning directly into rebound. There are many options. And of course, just doing what's best for you as we allow the fascia to contract back. As we feel the subtle sensations, again, what's perspiring from the nerves, the echoes of the fascia. Even within your rebound shape, you can allow the body to relax and soften.
And then again, if you'd like to stay here a little longer, you're more than welcome to do so. But when you're ready, we'll awaken the body, taking any movements so that we can come into our next sequence of stretching. So taking as many movements as you'd like, and then we'll slowly come back to a seated shape, however you'd like to get there. So what I have, my next idea anyway, is for us to take kind of like the double stretch in terms of our toe and our ankle stretch. We didn't really rebound after that. We went right into sleeping swan or figure four. So with that same in mind, with that same type of idea in mind, we're gonna start with a forward fold and then we're gonna take it back to lay down to butterfly. But these are the options. So you might prop your tailbone just so that it supports you, the lift of the pelvis and the fold. You might straighten your legs and just keep them long together. This shape is called caterpillar, where again, you can stack and fold and use blocks and things to fold over the thighs. Instead of caterpillar, if you'd like to take, take dragonfly, you'll bring the legs just in a V shape. And again, you'll fold, whether it's the stacking of blocks and props and pillows and things to support yourself within the forward fold. From there though, once we release, of course it will be slow, we'll transition. We'll then let ourselves lay back down and come right into butterfly. And then after butterfly is when we'll take rebound. Okay, so that's the idea here. And then of course we can talk about more prop options for butterfly, but just so you know, that's where we're going. For now, choosing caterpillar and or butterfly. Saying caterpillar and saying butterfly right now, I'm gonna go off on a tangent. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> just saying it now, I just thought of something that I wanna say. But letting yourself find the props that will support you here for your forward fold. Choosing caterpillar or dragonfly. You might not fold as deeply, right? You don't have to round so much. You can keep the spine taller and you're still in the pose. But after you arrive, taking a, a few transitory breaths, letting your breath flourish here. Letting it move through the different avenues, muscle groups, organs within the body. We can begin to let ourselves settle. So the tangent that I'll go on is probably going to take up the entire time of, of the pose of the pose. Um, my boyfriend Nico, when we were outside, he, he does like just so much renovating and just is interested in fixing and building and taking care of anything. So outside in our tree, he took a picture of this really fl fluffy caterpillar like super, super fluffy. Like I've never even seen a fluffy caterpillar like this. It had like a whole head of hair on it. And if you may have already, know, you're, my, you're probably like, oh, I know that caterpillar. But I never saw them in New Jersey. So it's a type of caterpillar moth thing that's actually venomous or poisonous. I, oh, actually, I don't remember. Was it venom, venomous, venomous or poisonous? I don't remember. But anyway, you wouldn't want it to bite you is my point. And it was also, I think it's also hurting our tree. So there's a whole other story with that. But anyway, as I was researching about this caterpillar, you know, we always say, whether in yoga or astrology or just mindful practices and sayings, right? We always hear how like, you know, we're this caterpillar and then we morph into a butterfly. But some caterpillars make cocoons and turn into moths, okay? So the, 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 the point of the story here is that as I was researching this and reading this, I, I was like, I realized something. I was like, wait a minute. If caterpillars turn into, into butterflies or moths, then that means when caterpillars 
I'm sorry, when moths and butterflies have their eggs, lay their eggs, they're actually caterpillars. And I just found that absolutely fascinating, even though we probably already like always knew it, you know it like logically in the back of my mind and all of our heads, but I never actually created that sentence where once a butterfly mates or a moth mates, its babies are not other butterflies or moths, its babies are caterpillars. So it's like, as if they're giving um, birth to this whole other species. <laughs> I don't even know if those words are right, but it was just absolutely interesting and profound <laughs> for me and my experience. I was like, wow, super cool. And like I said, that's just, a, we're just about time. So a few more breaths here in this forward fold. Maybe you're like me and you're like, wow, I never realized that, you know, or like actually thought of it that way. Maybe you did. So some uh, fun discovery channel stuff. We'll take one more breath exactly where we are in caterpillar or in dragonfly. And then whenever you're ready, we'll gently press down into the floor or maybe into our props and we'll start to lift up the head and chest slowly. Okay, just being mindful, you might move some things out of the way. And like I said, no rebound, we'll let ourselves transition right into butterfly. You might take a pillow for the back of the head. You might prop your spine with a pillow or bolster, but coming to lay back down, soles of the feet together, maybe taking pillows or blocks to support the knees or thighs. And as we transition into butterfly, we'll still feel this release almost like a semi rebound as we come to lay back down in the next shape, but quickly experiencing new sensations of stretch. So we'll allow there to be this blend or mixture within the body. And since I talked all of that last stretch, I'll be more quiet here. But first and foremost, allowing yourself to settle, letting your hands and arms relax. And creating that, that space to soften within the body and welcoming yourself in the stretch. Staying present with the breath. Staying present with that inner gaze. Just notice what the body expresses here within this idea of renewal.
Of course, checking in with your breath here. Maybe watching the shift of sensation, the way it might travel throughout the lines within the fascia. We'll be here in butterfly though for a few more breaths. Whenever you're ready, no rush. We'll begin to awaken the hands and arms. We might help the legs release from butterfly. You might be windshield wipering the knees if that feels good, finding any movements for the arms. Instead of windshield wiping the knees, you might want to hug the knees into the chest and wrap around the shins. Take movements there. Maybe straightening the legs up towards the ceiling and just letting the knees have a slight bend. Legs can dangle here. But after your counter movements, from both stretches, we'll then settle into a space to rebound, whatever that might look like for you. Reflecting on both shapes. Feeling that hum or buzz of presence. feeling that recalibration of the nervous system. The resetting of the physical and energetic body here. If you'd like to stay a little longer, you're more than welcome to do so. But I'd like us to do just one more thing before Shavasana. So you're welcome to lay back down if you're not already there. But I'm going to give us two options depending on what you want to do today and depending on what props you might have around you. So option one is to take a block and you'll bring that, you know, you'll come to lay down and it will be either on the second height there, stretching through the back of the neck, or you might bring it completely flat, right? But you'll kind of have to find the sweet spot, the best spot for it to be in. If it's on the second height, you'll, you'll place that edge of the block, right? Um, basically at the base of the skull and top of the neck, right? The, that space between the occipital lobes that I like to describe, your, your thumbs can feel those two divots there. And you'll start to uh, sway the chin side to side. Just take movements here, circles with the chin and just explore using the, or exploring the tight fascia within the back of the head. And if that doesn't work for you or it doesn't interest you, you can come to lay on the belly. And as you stack, your hands one on top of the other, placing your forehead 
more toward your wrist or your forearm. You can kind of just turn the head side to side and you'll massage the top of the forehead or the middle of the forehead or the base of the forehead, almost like at your eyebrows. So you can do each, whichever one, whichever one is exciting to you. Now the block will be a little bit more intense than having your arms settle to your forehead, but letting your head be heavy on your arms, I can find some pretty good sensitive places even here and just using the bone of my wrist or the bone of the forearm to do exactly what the block is doing. So we won't be here very long, but I'd like us just to get a little extra fascial release for either the face or the skull in some way. Still relaxing through the jaw and the cheeks of the face. Unclenching the teeth, softening the tongue. And allowing the sides of the neck to soften, letting your throat relax. If your shoulders are clenching, allow the shoulder blades to release. Softening through the chest and the diaphragm and the belly. Relaxing through the muscles of the glutes. Softening through the thighs and the knees and the calves. All the way to the soles of the feet. Feeling the extension of your arms here, softening into the elbows, into the palms and fingers. For your time in Shavasana, you might wanna stay exactly where you are. But if you'd like to release from this and just lay back down, you're welcome to. So if you're using the block, you'll lift your arms up above the head, slowly remove the block as you lay your head back down, maybe placing a pillow underneath it instead. Any blankets to cover the body, any props underneath the knees. Unless you're on your belly, you might stay on your belly and let your arms relax and just take Shavasana there. Your choice. But we'll settle right into stillness here, letting ourselves absorb our entire practice. Welcoming ourselves into our meditative moments and space of Shavasana.
Very gently. Let's begin to deepen the breath. Welcoming ourselves back into the space of the body. And you can begin to awaken with any gentle movement. Rolling through the wrists and ankles, moving through the fingers and toes. You might reach the arms up and above the head, taking a full body stretch. If it feels good, you can wrap the arms around the chest and contract the shoulders in a different direction. But from there, you'll bend the knees in, feet come flat to the floor. And you can roll either to the right or the left. Taking any other movements. Once you do rest on the side body, letting yourself feel the release of the back, the, fre the breath of fresh air along the spine. And either staying here or you can gently press down and walk back up to a seated shape. Settling into stillness wherever you'd like to end practice. And again, we'll reclose the eyes. We'll take a moment of reflection here. Noticing expansion, clarity, and then the other experiences and spaces of renewal that we relate with. We'll close our practice with one cleansing breath. Hands can stay within the lap and relaxed, or you might bring them into prayer at heart center. Let's breathe in through the nose. And open the lips to exhale. As we gently bow the chin to the chest. Thank you for practicing with me this evening, being elevated through yoga. Namaste.